Hi, welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. And on this episode, I'm gonna show you how I took this big red ATL fuel cell and put it in that big hole right there. Dang it. So you've decided you're gonna go auto racing. Well, good for you. Now there's a bunch of decisions to be made, like what kind of racing are you gonna do? What kind of a car are you gonna use to do it with? And then the list continues with engine, drivetrain, brakes, suspension, wheels and tires. And then somewhere down at the bottom of that list is safety, if it's on there at all. Well, a couple of things. First of all, maybe it ought to be up a little bit higher on the list. And number two, a really big part of that puzzle piece is one of those right there, the fuel cell. When it came time for us to decide what type of fuel tank we were gonna have with our fuel system, we had to do a little research. We went to the rules, and by the way, the rules and everything you need to know about building having certified and running your car is available at champcar.org. And in the rules that are available there, you go to fuel systems, and at the very beginning of that section, it says stock fuel tanks and stock locations or approved fuel cells are the only fuel sources allowed for competition. So we had two choices. We could go with the original fuel tank, which actually, that would have saved us a ton of money because these things, they're not cheap. But there's a couple of problems with that, and they were kind of fatal problems as far as the, the OEM fuel tank was concerned. The first thing is, the very next line, stock fuel tanks must not be altered in any way from OEM specs. No cutting, hammering, ballooning, or other changes are allowed. Okay, so why is that a big deal? Well, more on that later. The other thing that was a problem was that it has to be in the stock location. Well, the problem with the stock location is it's right here underneath the hatch shelf in the back of the car, way up high. There's 22 gallons of it, six pounds a gallon. You do the math, that's a lot of weight swaying back and forth up there. And that would be detrimental to the handling of the vehicle. There's another problem with it. If we go to the fuel cell rules, Fuel cells shall be limited to the stock OEM fuel capacity for the make model of the car, which is 22 gallons, plus or minus two gallons. So what that means is if we got a fuel cell, first of all, we can put it where it makes sense for us to put it. And secondly, we can have two extra gallons of fuel. Now the problem with that is number one, a lot of money. Number two is that I could not find a 24 gallon fuel cell that I could afford. But Shane Gerwing, one of our team members who is currently racing in Champ Car, said that there was a rule change that said that you could go with a larger capacity tank, but you got to reduce its capacity by some means to that number, in our case, 24 gallons. If you can do that, there's special rotationally molded spheres and cubes that you could use for that. And also you could just use empty oil containers. In the end, we've made the decision that the fuel cell is gonna work best for us overall. Another important consideration when you're considering what fuel cell you're going to buy, it has to meet certain specifications. And there's an organization called the FIA, which is a large international governing organization that oversees a lot of motorsports activities. And there is a specification called FIA, FT3. It's got to be that specification or higher. You got to check on that because if you show up with a tank that does not have that, you're not going to run until you do. So what is a fuel cell? 
Well, a fuel cell is a high strength fuel tank that most sanctioning bodies require you to have in order to participate in their events. Its primary function is safety. And when most people think of a fuel cell, they think of the big red can in the back of a race car. And the fact of the matter is, that's just the tip of the iceberg. This is actually the fuel cell. It's what's inside that counts. So what makes this thing a fuel cell? Well, the obvious thing is we've got a container right here. This is the actual fuel tank or fuel cell. In this particular case, this is made out of a very heavy duty puncture and abrasion resistant plastic that is going to withstand a tremendous amount of impact. Things try to penetrate through it. It's gonna resist that. And it's just a very, very tough, reliable container. Now this is kind of in the middle. This is what ATL calls their sportsman model of fuel cell. Now there can be fuel cells that are just simply aluminum cans that are welded together that have some of the same features as this cell. That's sort of the entry level fuel cell. At the other end of the scale, you've got the very flexible Kevlar pyramid fiber type of fuel cells that you find in NASCAR, Formula One, IndyCar, and other high level forms of racing, which are essentially the same thing as aircraft fuel cells. Very, very puncture resistant and virtually indestructible. So as I said, this is what we're using right here. It's champ car. We don't have to have the Formula One type of cell and it's still not cheap. This thing, as I recall, is about $1,100. Now, in addition to the, the container, we've got a yellow foam material that's on the inside. It's an open cell material that allows fuel to move through it back and forth, but its main function is to slow down the movement of the fuel as the car accelerates, decelerates, goes around corners, and in particular, when the vehicle's involved in an accident. Now, what you see up here is the plate that includes all of the fittings necessary for this tank to do what it does. First of all, you got the filler right here, and the filler has a little flopper valve on the bottom. It's just sort of a little door, one-way valve that allows fuel to come in, but when the car is turned upside down, it slams shut and slows down the egress of fuel from the tank. You've got a couple of fuel outlets, this being a road racing application, there's two, one for the right side, one for the left side, although we're only gonna be using one because we're using two fuel pumps. This red fitting that magically appeared right here, that is the vent fitting. And you need a vent on a fuel tank because you need atmospheric pressure to go in and out of the tank so that the fuel pump can work properly to get fuel up to the engine. It's a pretty simple thing. It's attached to a line that goes outside of the car. But the problem is that if this car turns over, that could be a great way for fuel to get out and feed the fire. So what Champ Car and most other organizations require is that this thing have a check valve under here. And the check valve is nothing more than a steel ball that when the car is upside down, it drops down and closes off the vent opening to the outside of the car, thereby minimizing the fire. We can also install a fuel quantity sending unit. And this one isn't set up for it, but what we can do is we can take and drill a hole the proper size and put the sender in. And what this does is sends an electrical signal up to the front of the car that tells the fuel gauge what to show the driver in terms of fuel quantity. That's it. That's what we need to make a fuel cell. Now, the problem is how do you mount this in the car? because there doesn't appear to be a lot of handles on this thing. Before you start cutting and welding metal, there's some things that you need to be aware of regarding the installation of your fuel cell. The first thing is you need to go to the rule book and find out everything you need to know regarding what they think you can and cannot do regarding your installation. And the first point here in the rule book, it says that it needs to be located in a safe location We've already got that figured out. It's gonna be low in the trunk well of the car and it should be mounted in a professional manner, okay? What does that mean? Well, 
what you need to do at this point is you need to go online and you need to go to the forums of Champ Car and uh, Circle Track forums and SCCA forums, any place where this type of fuel cell is used because you may find that a lot of suggestions as to what you do aren't actually going to work in your car. So the more information you get, the better. Another thing that is going to get you dinged during inspection is the fact that you can't install your fuel cell in a large tubular structure in the back of your car, which also contains the attach points for the suspension parts, lower control arms, springs, shocks, that sort of thing. Because what you're doing is you're building a race car in your race car. So the whole idea of Champ Car is to keep racing cheap, simple, and safe. Now what does ATL say about mounting their fuel cell in your car? Well, there's a couple of major points. First of all, whatever structure that you're going to use to mount this in your car, this has to be located securely inside of it with virtually no gap in between the members of that structure and the can. That's so that when you're in an accident, the structure's taking the load, the structure's taking the abuse, not the cell. Well, to a certain point. After that, everything gets hurt. But the point is, the structure takes the abuse, not the can. The other thing that they're real adamant about is that these bolts that attach the top of the can to the can itself, these cannot be used to mount the cell in your vehicle. What they're intended to do is simply locate it in the structure. Okay, what they're saying is you cannot just simply cut out the trunk of your car, weld in a piece of sheet metal, set this on top of that, take a sharpie, mark out a rectangle, cut a hole, drop it down in there, and then use these bolts to attach the cell to that piece of sheet metal. Okay, these are not intended for mounting purposes. Location in your structure only. Taking all those things into consideration, what I came up with was this little unit right here. Now this is almost identical to the structure that I built for the fuel cell on my track car, but it's a little bit bigger in all dimensions because our fuel cell is about four gallons bigger, but the layout is identical. Now what we got first of all is a flange on the top here. And this is made of one inch by one inch steel angle. And you can see that there's a number of holes that are drilled around the outside of it. These are corresponding to the bolt holes on the flange of the fuel cell. On the bottom, I've got the nuts for those bolts tack welded in so that you're not wrestling with nuts and bolts when you're taking this apart and putting it together. You're just wrestling with bolts. At these eight locations around here, at the top of these vertical members, there is a steel insert that is tapped to 5 16 national fine. And their function is to, once you get the fuel cell set down in there, you can then lay this structure on the top and then close off this whole structure with eight 5 16 national fine grade eight fasteners. The top is identical to the bottom. In fact, I flipped the cell over and clamped the pieces for this to the bottom to make sure that they were identical. Now, what I'm not gonna do is go into a great deal of detail as to how I actually built this thing. You're smart people, you can figure this out. But we've got mainly two large U-shaped structures that run the width of the fuel cell. You got two spacers that fit in between those two. You got four L-shaped structures. There's two on the front, two on the back. And all of these then have the steel insert in the top and are welded to the flange. In addition to that, what we've got is these two mounts here. You've got this V-shaped mount right here, which has, as you can see, the mounting tabs that actually get welded into the car. This one and the one on the other side locate 
the structure laterally, and this one right here will locate it fore and aft. And the material that I used is this stuff right here. This is one inch by one inch by 11 gauge or 120 thousandths mild steel. Probably heavier than what I really needed. But you know what? You go online, you find a few images of burn victims. Fact is, I'm the leader of this Mary Band, and there's only one person in this group that's got any significant on-track experience. So the possibility for disaster does actually exist here. So that stuff right there, that's going to work just fine. And there it is. I think that's going to be up to the job, although you never really know unless you wreck your car. So I hope we don't find out. And there we have the final fit up between the mounts for the cage and the body of the vehicle. You can see that we've got a really good fit. This is not tacked in here. This is just sort of a light friction fit. I mean, not even a friction fit. It's just sort of in a slight angle. And you can see that everything is fitting just the way we wanted it. It, and it's just a matter of leveling it with the rocker panels on the car and then we're ready to weld it in. Now you'll notice that at every one of these points <clears throat> we've got a 16 gauge plate. The reason being this is only 20 gauge and it'd be real easy for these mounts to tear off of that. So what these do of course is spread out the load and give you something a little more beefy to weld to in order to mount the cage. lightly screwed together and mounted in the back of the car where it's going to be when it's racing. It looks really good. It's going to do its job really well. I'm really pleased with how it came out. I will say, however, this is going to be a real pain in the neck to get in and out of the car because you're going to want to take it out and inspect it every year and put it back in again. So yeah, that's just the way it is. Hopefully that will only be once a year though when somebody else is around, because that's going to be a son of a gun to single hand. So, anyway, if you like these Champ Car videos and you want to see more of them, like us, subscribe to us, follow us on Facebook, and leave a few comments below so that we know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.